Hey everyone, I'm Asia Dang. Thank you so much for joining my channel. And today we are talking about the steps I took to buy a house as a self-employed person. If you are a freelancer, if you work for yourself, buying a house is still possible, proof, but it is definitely a little bit more difficult because we have to kind of go over and above to show our income and that we actually make real money and that we could actually afford a house. This is going to be my experience buying a house as a self-employed person. I'm sure the experiences vary depending on where you're moving to, where you're buying a house, the lender you use, your income. So if your experience is different than mine, please let us know in the comments. The more that we can help each other out, the better because this experience of home ownership and buying a house is a little bit intimidating and can be very stressful so if we can all share our various different stories about how the home buying process went as someone who is a freelancer who is self-employed then i think that um, that'll help a lot of people out so the very first thing that i did and the very first thing we all should do is i got pre-approved and i'm saying this specifically as i because technically Technically, I am the one who bought the house, even though the um, mortgage and the home ownership, whatever title, is under both of our names. Brennan and I decided that it would be kind of maybe better to just buy a house under one income so we can again, as freelancers, be sure that every month we would be able to afford this house. And the reason why getting pre-approved is so important is one, it helps you figure out how much you can afford. This will help you save time narrowing down your home search for places you can actually afford. And sometimes, you know, on, you know, Credit Karma, they can say, you know, these are the prices of the homes that you can afford. But until you really get pre-approved, you don't actually know that that is factual. And then two, it can also be advantageous. I don't think I've ever said that word on this page before, <laughs> but it'll most likely help you in a competitive market when you show the sellers that, you know, I can actually afford to buy your house. I was referred to a lender through our realtors and I'll go ahead and put the lender that I used and our realtors, if you're looking for Houston in the description box, because I really enjoyed our home buying and loan process experience with them. They worked together and made everything go pretty, I would say as smoothly as possible. With all that information out of the way, let me show you, explain step by step, the process that it took me to actually buy a house. So the first thing I did was I contacted Rhett, again, his information is gonna be in the description box, and I told him I was interested in getting pre-approved for a home loan. Then he sent me a link to an application and before he sent me the link, I didn't tell him that I was self-employed because I wasn't really sure how big of a deal that was going to be. And within that link, it asked for three recent pay stubs, 2022 and 2021 tax returns, and then two months of the most of my most recent bank statement. So when I saw the request of getting three recent pay stubs, that's kind of when I told him and I was self-employed because I don't get paychecks. I just get money directly deposited. My management handles all the finances through of like brand deals for me. So I don't get invoices. I don't send invoices. That's not something I do. So I told him that I don't get traditional pay stubs. And he said that since I contract out for a company, I can, we can verify my employment information and therefore get, you know, my financials through them. So I contacted my management company and I got them to send me basically all the most recent invoices that they sent out for me within the first, I guess, like two months of the year, which was when we were starting to look. So all that being said, there are a few things that I realized that I did in my life to make me a little bit more organized within my life that made things a little bit more complicated during the home buying process or getting pre-approved. So the first thing I did, or I should say the first thing I didn't do before I applied for pre-approval was I forgot to unfreeze my credit with all three credit bureaus. So when I first contacted Rhett, he was unable to run my credit because I had that freeze. To me, it's like an important fail safe. It's free and it's just like, 
like a really secure thing that I think that we should all do to make sure that no one runs your credit without your consent. And that's proof because <laughs> I still had my freeze on it and Rhett couldn't run my credit. So if you are interested in signing up to freeze your credit, you have to do this individually on the three credit bureaus. So Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, you have to do go online, sign up, and freeze them individually at the specific websites. And then when you unfreeze them, you again have to go to those three specific websites to unfreeze them. The second thing that I needed to do specifically was because we were buying a house and moving from California to Texas, that he asked me to get a written letter from my CPA saying, this is not gonna affect her job. This is not gonna affect the amount of money that she makes. And for us, I think it's like kind of common sense to think that an online creator can literally work anywhere in the world and it won't be a big deal, but we're going through banks. We're going through institutions. So that was something, again, that was really easy to do. However, it did make me a little nervous when I'm reliant on other people to send me invoices or send me letters of recommendation. I don't know what else to call them because that's I'm no longer in charge of the timeline. So when I emailed my CPA, it was kind of just like the beginning of when people were contacting him for um, taxes and stuff. So I was a little worried that he would take a while to get back to me with the letter, but he did it immediately. And then I sent it to Rhett and it was easy. And then the third thing that made things a little bit more difficult and I feel a little bit responsible because I preached this on my channel. So I'm sure you might have a similar situation is I have multiple bank accounts. And the reason why I have multiple bank accounts is because I like to separate out my money. Um, it just is easier for me to control it. I feel much better having different accounts at different banks for different things. But the reason why that made it tricky was because when I first gave him my bank statements, what I did was I gave him my bank statements for my main account. He was like, where's your money for your down payment? Do you have other accounts because you, you don't have enough money for a down payment? And I'm like, don't worry, Rhett, I got you. And then I had to send him my accounts where my down payment fund was held. I sent him my accounts where basically all of my sinking funds were held. I sent him my accounts for, and I'm saying accounts, but I mean statements. I sent him my statements where my investments were. So again, not a big deal, but I just, I kind of just always forget that I might have my money done in a way where most people don't. Um, that's very unique to me. So what I should have done is I just should have off the bat sent him all of my statements for all my accounts instead of just doing my main one. But it honestly didn't even occur to me to do that. So just know if you have multiple bank accounts, you'll probably be asked to send statements for all of them. And again, it's so easy. You just go online and you click a button that says statements and then download and then that's where you upload or send in your statements to your loan provider. So again, nothing super like inconvenient or stressful. It was just like another day of email threads before I actually got approved. And then also I think for me, having a management team also confused Rhett a little bit. I think I might've been his first full-time content creator that he's ever worked with. So with that, I had to send him a signed contract between myself and my management team. And then my management firm sent them three invoices that they had recently received or sent out. I'm not sure which one. Um, on my behalf. And again, this is just with my personal experience as someone who is self-employed, you might not have to go through all these hoops like I did. And it's probably different also if you're incorporated or not. So again, this is all my experience for my particular life situation. I just still wanted to share what I went through during this process. But I have to say, ultimately, that was kind of, again, in my experience, the worst part of the home buying experience was just making sure I had all the appropriate paperwork to show them that I can in, in fact buy, afford to buy a house. And then after that, I would say everything went really smoothly. So all that being said, here are kind of the few things that I would recommend every self-employed person to do to get in order before they start the pre-approval and home buying process. The first thing you need to do is get your financial records in order. Your tax returns, uh, profit and loss statements, and bank statements, 
just gather those and have them ready. The second thing I would recommend you do is slow down on the tax deductions. Business expenses and tax deductions are the highlight of every self-employed person. However, because it decreases our taxable income, the income that we show on our tax returns will be less. So all you have to do is plan accordingly. Try to minimize the amount of business expenses you'll be taking like the year or two leading up to you buying a house. And then the next thing, and I think the more most important thing you'll wanna do is save up 20% for a down payment and fully fund that emergency fund. As a freelancer, our income just varies drastically. I mean, you have seen my pain. Sometimes I get paid five figures a month. Sometimes I get paid literally nothing. So before you even consider buying a house, definitely have 20% put aside for a down payment, whether you actually put the full 20% or not, because you don't have to and that's okay, but I would still recommend saving up 20% and then also just fully fund your emergency fund because let me tell you, we've been in this house for like two weeks and we've had already a gas leak, which was an emergency that I thankfully didn't have to dip into my emergency fund for, but if I needed to, I would have been thankful that we had it. And also if you decide to put less than 20% down on a down payment, just to have that extra money for renovations or any other things, moving costs, any other things that might incur cost-wise in the whole home buying purchasing process, you will be very lucky and grateful that you had that extra money to spend. This house has been a money suck. Fortunately, we had kind of leftover money from the down payment fund to do these things, but now we are, we have no more money. So everything is now gonna come out of our current pockets. All this to say, buying a house when you're self-employed is possible and it isn't as stressful as maybe you might think. Just make sure that you're organized, make sure that you're working with the right people who might understand your situation and um, just be prepared for literally anything. I hope this video made you feel a little bit more confident as a self-employed person entering possibly the home buying experience. Again, this is just my personal experience with everything and everything that I had to do. So your experience might be different or your experience might have been different if you've already bought a house. Buying this house would not have been possible without your support. So I really appreciate it. And um, let me know if I can answer any other more home buying questions in future videos. I'm Aisha Dane. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all later. Bye.